All right. How you good. doing? Uh, for those just tuning in, this is Kurt Scooby, and that is your real last name, right? Yeah, it's my real last name. Yeah, wow, yeah. wow. And uh, you are from Georgia? <laughs> oh. Nah, that's not, uh, nah, I'm from Duarte, California. Oh, you're from California. Okay. Yeah, and, yeah man. Enjoying it. All right. So you left Vegas, man. We were supposed to have you in the studio. What happened? Shit, honestly, man, work. I mean, you know. Oh, nah, so you got a nine to five? Nah, I don't. This is what well, boxes my nine to five, to be honest. All but, right, all right. Uh, you know, some some other shit, but it's just chopping up to the game, you know what I mean? All right. Well, Kurt, man, uh, tell us your story, man. How'd you get into this sport? Why this crazy sport, man? Honestly, man, on, I came from football, so football is a eleven man sport, you know what I mean? And I knew that everything I put into the game that 10 other people couldn't match that energy. You know what I mean? So I knew boxing was always my, my it. And I knew that I can, I can't get in trouble for beating a man up. Nah, nah, I love that aspect of life. All right. And uh, tell us who you're trained with and how'd you link up with him? Because I, f I feel like he's all the way from Brooklyn, right? Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, Don Saxby and, and Leon Cat Taylor. I actually moved to New York during the pandemic. It was always my dream to actually live in New York. You know what I mean? Seeing those little postcards with the Brooklyn Bridge and, you know what I mean? And I finally got the opportunity to move to New York where the flight cost $11 during the pandemic. So I knew that was my, my chance to actually move there. You know what I mean? For sure. For sure, man. What I mean, what, what made you go during the pandemic, though? That was when New York was most, I mean, it was not itself. Did you yeah. still feel Honestly, like you got a good experience? Of course. I feel like the pandemic for me, it, it actually bettered me. You know what I mean? Instead of backtracking, I got better while other people were sleeping. You know what I mean? And and moving to New York during the pandemic actually showed me that the grind never stops. Even if people were, were going through the worst, you know what I mean? God forbid, you know, if, if something could happen to me. But I, I work with Allah, so Allah protects me in, in all aspects. So what was it about Don? Because if you if you just got to New York during the pandemic, I mean, you've already obviously had been, uh, you know, your your pro career had been started already. So you switched training. Nah, it hasn't. Oh it no, actually hasn't. Yeah, nah. My first fight was with Don Saxby. Oh, okay. Because you you just know when with energy, you know, what I mean, if somebody's good or bad, I feel like I'm I'm so I'm so in tune with my own body that I, I can tell when energies are are not entwined with each other. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I seen you obviously uh training alongside the Michaels, but you were out here in Vegas specifically to spar with Devin Haney to get him ready for Cambosos, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, so what division are you fighting and campaigning in? So those listening uh, you know, can know exactly you know where you fight at. It has you listed yeah. at 140, but you've also fought as high as 49, so I wanted to let you answer. Yeah, I, I fight at 140. That's my that's my my for sure weight class. That's my weight class now. And that is that's the weight class that you feel you want to win your first world title before moving up. Not not want to. Um, it's a whole different aspect because my mind is a different place. I will, you know what I mean. So this it's a whole different different wording than uh, want and, and will. You know what I mean, <laughs> so. You're residing in Cali, or are you residing now in New York because of the trainer change? Boss, I, I got a beautiful, a beautiful girl. That I just moved. And we just bought a beautiful house in Pennsylvania. And oh wow, man! Yeah, so I, I'm actually living the the true boxers world with chopping wood and being out here and in the country. You know what I mean? So it's a whole different. Bruh, what made you move from Cali to PA? What about the cold? You like the snow? Yo, honestly, <laughs> it's crazy because I seen all these these movies with, with like with snow and Home Alone and all that. I'm like, man, honestly, I'm enjoying. It. I'm over here doing Snow Angels and I'm actually living it up. <laughs> he said Snow Angels. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, because where I come from, man, like it, it's it's bad. Where if, if there was snow where I was from, man, I think there would have been a little less killings than where you know what I'm saying. But yeah, I'm actually enjoying it and I, I'm living life at this at the moment because. Like I said, I'm spiritually right. You know what I mean? So where were you raised, man? You you make it sound like it was uh, Iraq out there. Yeah, it was. You know what I mean? What it part was, uh, What part Duarte, of the world? Duarte, California. Mm. 
So it's near uh one of the, near Pasadena area. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So you know, what I mean, it was uh it, a little hectic where you know what I'm saying you 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 walk down the street and you got to look over your shoulder. You know what I mean? And moving here to PA, it's like. And I don't really got to look over my shoulder unless I see a barrel or a, a deer. <laughs> it was a whole different mindset. And I'm just, like I said, um, I was able to see the light of day where other other people nowadays see and it kind of gets stuck in that. You know what I mean? Kurt, now uh, talk to us. Do you have a, a deal with a promoter, a manager, anything like that? Yeah, I actually have a manager. His name is Daniel Gonzalez. And uh, as a promoter, as of right now, I'd... I don't, but you know, something like like we we always iterate that nothing in life is rushed. You know what I'm saying? So we don't rush anything because once things are rushed, then it's like it's not gonna be good. You know what I mean? Well, no, I was actually gonna say, um, not having a promoter, you literally turned pro during the pandemic, and yep. you were very active. You've been very active, and to me, I feel like that's an issue that a lot of young fighters who don't have a big promoter have an issue with is getting those fights. Um, mm. First three in, in Mexico, and then the following three in the Dominican Republic, your last fight here in the U.S. What was it like? In going, Atlantic City. Yeah, in Atlantic City. What was it like for you to go down to Mexico and go down to the Dominican Republic and be able to experience that culture, those coaches mm. and get that work? Honestly, it's, it's all God willing. You know what I mean? It was a great experience. You know what I mean? It's just crazy to be to be boxing in, in a bar or boxing in, in a backyard damn near. So, you know what I mean? I got that experience and, and you know, and then boxing in Atlantic city, that was, that was a great experience because everyone was like, man, you've been boxing in and out of the country and these different state, I mean, different countries. And will you be like, will you amount to be something? You know what I mean? I'm like, man, I play football. I was a D one athlete and I live up to that, to the, to the lights. You know what I mean? So I perform, under the lights at, at, my, at my best, you know what I mean? So I honestly feel like preparing and, and fighting in, in Mexico and DR actually prepared me to to prevail, you know what I mean, from where I'm at now. I'm not, I'm not done yet either. Did you get did you get a lot of love from um the Mexican or the Dominican people? I know the Mexican people are huge fight fans. Um, yeah. So I'm sure they you probably were walking into the ring every fight getting booed, but... Nah, nah, really? nah, I actually wasn't. I was... Honestly, uh, I'm I'm a good person, and people could feel that. You know what I mean. So, I would always bring people with me, and 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 by the time I'm done fighting, they would be cheering even more than what they were before. You know what I mean. So, Kurt, man, I see that you have a picture here with Terrence Crawford. Uh, was this at the top rank gym that you posted? That's snack. Oh, that's snack. That, gym. Yeah, that's, that's a snack. Yeah, yeah, that's a snack. Gym. So you just worked alongside, or did you get to spar? <laughs> nah, actually, uh. I sparred Devin. It was about ten rounds with Dev. Wow, and, uh, straight. And Terrence, yeah, ten rounds straight. Yeah, I was, that was, that was your first time was sparring Devin. No, nah, it was uh, that was the second day we sparred. You know what I mean? But this time flying out to Vegas has been your first time sparring with him. Uh, no, we 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 started off in uh, San Francisco from there, and then we flew to um to Vegas. Oh there. wow! So you must have made a good impression that they flew you. From San Francisco to Vegas. I mean, sparring stays in, in, in the gym, you know what I mean? So, obviously, I mean, I, I mean, I, I guess I did. You know what I mean? My job is just to go in there and do what I have to do. You know what I mean? If I got to help people out, I got to help people out. He's also a Muslim brother, so I actually helped him out in that aspect, too. Did Did you... um? So, what was it like for you during Ramadan? Obviously, Ramadan, um, you know, has now concluded, but... What was it like for you during Ramadan being a Muslim fighter? We had Abdullah Mason in here, and he mm. fought on the Shakur undercard. And so Ramadan ended Sunday, correct? Correct. Right. So he was like, yeah, like, you know, I'm not eating, you know, during the day or anything like that. So what What was it like for you, and how are you able to, you know, still manage and maintain during Ramadan? Honestly, it's just about the mindset. You know I mean? first two days are hard, of course, but once you make it, past that it, it's just a whole mindset you know what i mean because then you put in your mind like nobody could if I, I i'm not eating and i'm still performing at my best you know what i mean so when you're in the ring you, nothing could stop you but allah you know and that's how i feel where it was it was nothing like it, it was the best experience because like not not many people know that when when you're hungry and you're like starving that's when you become in a different mindset 
you become an, in a hunger mindset. You're instead of being a prey, you're the predator. Mm, so you feel like it almost brings out the best in you. Uh, if, I know it does. Not yeah, if, for sure it does. You okay. know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. yeah. Now that experience with Devin, obviously training alongside Terrence, being in a facility like Snack, what was that like for you? And you know, how much were you able to learn from you know that experience, top level guys? Uh, I learned a lot, and you know I mean, um, just from this whole experience, I learned not to to talk to talk less and, and listen more. You know, what I mean, that, and that's when you learn the uh, most in life. You know what I mean? And the seeing Terrence teach other people and and picking up the stuff that he's teaching other people, that's what I was learning. And I actually seeing Shakur and all them work, work and it was just it, it was actually like a blessing because you know, what I mean, I, I manifested so many things in life, and and all these things are coming true, like working out at the top ranked gym. And and just being alongside of these 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 top guys and and I, I'm I'm telling myself you know I prayed on this and I manifested it and I belong with these top guys you know what I mean only thing is, is just being seen and I don't even have to worry about that because patience is a virtue when it comes to that no definitely um so being so young in your career seven and zero first six fights being outside of the country for those who may not be familiar with you and or maybe hearing your name for the first time, you know, describe your style to the fight fan, 7-0 with five KOs. So obviously you mm -hmm. possess power. Uh, your last opponent, you got him out of there in the second round, even though he was far more experienced than you, you know, winning record right. and everything. So describe your style. How would you describe your style to the fight fan who's getting to know you for the first time? Who is Kurt Scooby? Man, Kurt Scooby is a, it's a humble man. You know what I mean? And uh, to be speaking on myself is, is I can't really do that. You gotta you gotta come to the fights and show up, you know what I mean? And that's a part of selling myself. And uh and I truly believe when you when you see me fight, then you'd be like become a, a more of a fan than than your favorite boxer, to be honest. School, man. So how'd you link up with the Michaels? Uh, yo, we were uh this is crazy <laughs> because I've always seen Michael on on Instagram, you know what I mean? And and uh and we actually met up in San Francisco and I and from there we was like, man, we we I mean, that's my man's man now, you know what I mean? Like he's a good, good soul, good, genuine dude, you know what I mean? So we were, you know, every, I swear, every day that we were inspiring, we were working out. We were training like it was our training camp, you know what I mean? So that's what I, that's what I brought to him. Like, hey, bro, we got to train. We got to do the things we got to do because at the end of the day, he's preparing for a fight, but we're preparing for a fight as well, you know what I mean? For sure. In your time at Bones Adams, did you ever get to spar a guy by the name of Abram? Martinez. Abram Martinez, one of Bones' nah. guys? Nah. 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 He, he, but we can get to work. <laughs> he's, he's another, uh, you know, four, four, yeah, he's 40 at 40. pounder. I uh, believe tw 10 and 1 or 9 and 1, mm -hmm. um, something like that. So, But you were talking about putting in that work as if you were in camp, as if, as if you were preparing for your own fight. Um, we've spent a lot of time with Devin throughout his camps, and one thing that – um, you know, we see day in, day out is obviously the work ethic and, and, you know, the dedication in the gym. Right. Right. Do you feel that they, uh, they being Terrence and, and Devin and Amari out there when you, when you guys were getting that work, do you feel that they kind of brought the best out of you, you know, brought you to another level to where you like, damn, like I got to make every workout like this because mm -hmm. th that's how they're doing mm -hmm. it. Nah, not really. To be honest, man, I, I don't really compete against others or let other people change my environment. Um, I train every day like like it's my last day of, of living, you know what I mean? And that's that's the way of of that's what I bring to the table. You know what I mean? That's how that's how you have to do. When you start competing against other people, then that's when it, it that's when your whole your whole system's thrown off because you're not worried about yourself. Mm. Mm. No, definitely. So I was, you know, bringing that up, but also kind of curious, you know, you were last in the ring, you know, in March. Do you have maybe a date? I know it's only been a, a little over a month, but, you know, do you have maybe a, a potential date, you know, in mind mm -hmm. or anything that you're hearing? Yo, honestly, uh, I think it's June or uh, July, but I'm ready whenever, you know what I mean? I, I stay ready, so I have to get ready. And I know that term is overused, but... I truly believe in that, and you know, what I mean, to go ten rounds in a, in a training camp with somebody else. I mean, I think I, I truly am ready. You know, what I mean, I can fight tomorrow. So, do you have any relations with uh, Greg Cohen Promotions? 
Cause I believe, no, I actually don't. Oh, okay. Cause I believe that's, I think that's uh, that's the Michael. Yeah. Yeah, right. that's the Michael's uh, people's, and you know, I just assume. But like you said, you just met the Michaels as well, is is what you're saying? Mm-hmm. Wow. But it, it, honestly, I don't mean to curse, but it shit for like a, I, I like I've known them for my whole life. You know what I mean? Wow. That's how we were operating. Because I'm telling you, once you get around good souls and good energy, you you know what I'm saying? It, it's it's destined just to everything to be good. You know what I mean? From there. So. A hundred and forty pound division right now, in my opinion, is a pretty open division. You know, Josh Taylor is still the undisputed champion, and he just defended mm-hmm. that undisputed crown against Jack Catterall. But it seems right. er- everything indicating that he is moving to welterweight. Does that kind of bring you more hope, more energy, more? Um, I don't know, knowing that hey, those belts are there for motivation, the taking. yeah, motivation, like those boss, boss. Those, that don't that don't worry I don't worry about none of that. It comes within, you know. What I mean, mm. I I have a daughter. I have a daughter to worry about, and that's my motivation. I don't worry about belts. I don't worry about none of that. I, I fight for my legacy. I don't fight for the O. You know what I mean? And that's that's the difference between me and uh, and all these other fighters. I'm not one of these clout people. I don't like. I mean, I got yeah, I've got these two chains, but it was, it was these were gifted. You know what I mean? And I'm not worried about none of that. I'm just standing in my lane, and and, and things will come to me as then. Let me ask you, uh, being as though you're trained with Don Saxby, did you spar with his other fighter, Les Pierre? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's my guy, too. Yo, we be getting around, be getting around with, with everybody, you know what I mean? And it's all it's all, it's all, all within, you know what I mean? Like I said, sparring stays in between. But, my, yo, Les Pierre is cold, though. I like, I like working with him a lot. Cold and, dude, man. And have you been able to pick the brain of uh, former, I don't know how many division champ, but uh, mini Mike Tyson, Joan Guzman? Because you're out of Gleason's, I'm assuming, with Don, right? Mm-hmm. One thing about me is, uh, I don't know if you you seen me last time, but I always carry a notebook. I'm always carrying a notebook. And people think I'm weird because when they say some wise stuff, I'm in my notebook writing it down. Mm. And look at me like, I was at, this is, sorry, a side note. I was at top rank and... Everything that everybody was saying. Oh shoot! Can you, can you see yeah, me? Yeah. No, we can't see you. All right. All right. Yeah. So every everything that everybody was saying. Al Mitchell, K. Karuma, Terrence. I was writing down. I was in my journals writing it down. Everybody looking at me like this guy is weird. Not knowing that that's the true knowledge. When you write things down, that's when you pick up things. You know what I mean? So when John Guzman talks, I'm writing it down, or I'm 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 storing it, and I'm writing them in my phone. You know what I mean? And it's it's crazy. Just. Just to pick up knowledge like that, you know what I mean? And mini Mike Tyson, John Guzman, man, that dude is cold. But I got a cold coach too, Leon Cat Taylor and Don Saxby. No, absolutely. I think that's extreme. Leon, uh, is that the guy with like the ah? He that's got a raspy guy, voice. He got the raspy that's voice. The guy. That's, he's that's training the guy, a he's say. training a Puerto Rican girl now, right? Who? Um. She's she's brand new, but she's been in that she's been in Gleason's for like four years. She's Puerto Rican, uh, fair skin. Melissa? I'm, I'm not gonna, sure. I'm gonna look I'm it up, sure. but she 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 normally spars with like Alicia Napoleon. She's definitely not under 140. No, I, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, I gotta do this. I don't I'm not sure. I'm I'm there all the time. I'm I don't remember a Puerto Rican girl. Scoob, I gotta ask, man, who is your photographer? Because some of these pictures are crazy. Like you have a picture from September of last year, you getting your hand raised, and my man's is lying dead on the ground. Like your photographer. Oh yeah, yeah. Yo, whoever <laughs> get got these pictures, like how how has that not been censored? Like my man's is literally laying there lifeless. It's crazy. <laughs> nah, that was uh, I got I got a role for um. For power, you know what I mean? The the show power. Oh, what? really? Yeah, man. So yeah, I got a I got a role for that, that whole little aspect. And like I said, I just I just relax and, and stay calm and pray and things come to me. You know what I mean? How how did that I come gotta, about? Gotta, that that that's pretty dope. Just just being at Gleason's and uh I actually wasn't I didn't even try out for the role. I was just hitting the bag and it was like everybody else was trying out for the role and I ended up just hitting the bag and we're just chilling. And the guy walks up to me and skips to everybody else and was like, hey, like without even trying out, he was like, You wanna you wanna be in the, the show power? I was like, I mean, sure, you know what I mean? I was of course. And then he was like, You don't even need to try out. You just just I'll see you tomorrow. I'm signing for SA SAG, I, I think that's the name of it. 
signed me up for that, and it was a go from there. I was like, all right, this is, a little, this is it. You know what I mean? I like it. So uh, has that aired? Because I watched Power. Um, I don't remember a boxing scene in it. Has that aired? Yeah, it was in uh, Raising Canaan. Mm. Oh, the Raising Canaan. So the the yeah, Raising Canaan. Oh, so that's that's not on no more. I'm gonna have to go back and check it out because I'm yeah, like, you have to check it out. Man. I'm like, bro, I watch all that shit, but you know, <laughs> you and me both. You I'm know. on Ozark right now, so I'm, oh, I'm nice. Yeah. I like Ozark. What, what what's in uh what's in your playlist? What gets you going? Like when you in the gym, what what do you like to to be listening to? What gets you going? Some uh Sam Cook. Mm. That, wow, that, yo, that give me that give me. That's what I'm walking out to next. Not to, no, I, I shouldn't even said that, but I surprised people. But yeah, that's my that's my my go to. Sam Cooke, Chain Gang. That's crazy. I uh, I I used to listen. It's weird. I used to listen to Sam Cooke before I would play ping pong. Oh yes, yeah, he is I, I different. Was, yeah, I was playing ping pong competitively for a little bit, and it was always Sam Cooke. I don't know why. It was always Sam. It, it's soothing, man. It's very, it's a very soothing voice, and and he's speaking some real facts too. You know what absolutely, I mean? Absolutely, absolutely. That's why I, my grandma used to play that when uh every Saturday and Sundays when we used to clean the house. So it's like when I'm in the gym, I'm cleaning the house. You know what I mean? You got to sweep the floor in order for it to be clean, but the next day it still might be dirty. So you got to keep sweeping it. You know what I mean? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, I want to talk about your days at Azusa Pacific. You know, playing D three mm -hmm. ball. What was that experience like? And, mm. you know, when when did you realize, like, it's not going to be football? Like, you know. I actually, yeah, I actually went to <laughs> Fresno State and then left Fresno State mm. to go to uh, the Pacific, you know what I mean? Where, uh, honestly, I knew football was always, was like my way to get to college, you know what I mean? You got to use your resources where Absolutely. I knew that my my football ability was, was my way to get to college, you know what I mean? Uh, and that was my way to get out of trouble too. So I use that to to help me see the world. You know what I mean? Because when you're in football, you travel the world. The same with boxing. You you do good, you travel the world. You know what I mean? And I knew I, I didn't want to be in trouble. I didn't want to be one of those troublemakers. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna be a baller. I'm I'm gonna do my 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 stuff on the football field, and I'm gonna travel the world. So I don't gotta be in the city getting in trouble. You know what I mean? Or looking over my shoulder. What was the biggest thing that college football taught you? you know, in your days that you still use to this day in, in boxing? That this is all a business at the end of the day. It's, just, it's not for fun as we we used to play these these games or play football as a kid. It used to be fun. But now it's it's a, this is a business, you know what I mean? So when you come into any aspect of boxing or football, you just got to know that at the end of the day, another this coach has to feed his family too, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, Scoop, uh, is that genetics, football, or what? Were you always, because you seem like physically like you were ready for a fight right then and there. You're pretty mm. uh, low body fat. So is that genetics? Is that be from your early years in football? W what do you attribute it to? Honestly, you should see my grandpa. My grandpa had 18-inch arms when he was, what, 15? Mm. So it's basically it's genetics, man. And, and the knuckles... They got my family got some huge knuckles, so you know what I'm saying. It, it's for sure genetics, and okay. the way we train. I train uh, honestly. I train hard. You know what I mean. I, uh, there's really not really days off, and if there is a day off, I, I'm fighting to to not take that day off. You know. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And um, did you like? I know he asked you. Was there anything you took from football? But like, we like to ask people. Mm hmm. Do you think being in shape for football means you're in shape for boxing? And what are some of the no, differences? No, nah, there's no way. Um, football is uh, you're lifting. Football, so football, you can you can do three days. You know what I mean? Because you can rest. There's not really a a time period where you're like going all the time. You know what I mean? Boxing, you need rest. I, I didn't realize that. I try to bring the same mindset to to to, um, to boxing. And you need to like le like legit rest before you do anything. So I can't really do like the, the three days or the four days I used to do. Now I'm over here doing one a day and taking a nap and watching a film. You know? Yeah. No, absolutely. Did did you bring any of that running from football into boxing? Did it make because you know there's allegedly yeah, not yeah. not that every boxer runs miles, but you know uh, that's kind of synonymous with boxing running. So. 
was that transition easy for you or was the running even different than the running in football? When it's hard work, it's all, all work is easy work. You mm. know what I mean? So there's no, no, no such thing as a, a hardship for me anymore. You know what I mean? Because I, like I said, I'm mentally right where everything happens for a reason. You know what I mean? And me have, coming to football and if it's, you know what I mean? All, all this stuff is easy for me now. You know what I mean? For sure. I got to ask, you know, um, I see you got pictures with your daughter back when you was playing football and now you're boxing. Uh, does she yeah, understand yeah. Does she understand what daddy does and does she knows that, like, you're yeah. literally fighting? That's, that's why I got the LEO on my on my belt, on my um on my waist trainer. I'm not waist trainer, sorry. On my um on my trunks, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because she knows that's what, that's what I do it for. I don't do it for her. Anybody else, you know what I mean, I, I do it for her, and that's my motivation. Mm. No, it should be, <laughs> right? Well, Scoop, man, give out your social media. If anybody that isn't following you can do so, we want to obviously thank you sure. once again for coming on the show. We appreciate it, and uh, we want to continue to follow your career and, and, and the, tr the career of your trainer, Don Saxby, as well. So mm -hmm. please keep us up to date whenever you uh, get notified of your next fight. Um, so you. that we can break that news here on TBV, the boxing voice. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Thank you guys, and everybody follow me on Channel Two Scoop. It's on the right here somewhere. Yeah, so follow there. that and tap in, and yo, everybody stay motivated and just give thanks that you know what I'm saying you woke up and you're seeing a lot of day. Not many people get to see that, so just always give thanks when you wake up. Yes. Sir. All right, Scoop man. Thank, thank you, you so much. Uh, there you have you. it, ladies and gentlemen, up and coming prospect Kurt Her Scooby. <laughs> Next up. Yo, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit the like, subscribe, and share. As always, if you want to support us to the next level, head over to the patreon.com backslash the boxing voice. We have tons of exclusive from Border Wars and title betting shows. The list goes on and on and on. But in addition to that, if you guys have questions for fighters, trainers, and promoters, this is where you can submit them. We will run out, get these questions answered, and put it back on the show just for you guys. Appreciate it. Peace.